Okay guys, um, let's just start the day off today with uh, another um, exciting experiment, I guess. Uh, okay, um, uh, so I wanted to um, show you guys um, some biochemistry stuff, you know, because we aren't going to have very much time to do it. But I think a good example is to um, show you something that you could actually do at home, right? If you've got a potato and a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, you can make oxygen gas. Um, there's this enzyme in the potato. Uh, it's either a peroxidase or a catalase, or maybe both. Um, and you can actually test substances um, to see if this enzyme is present in them. Okay, and it gives you a uh, quite a, a well-defined, a good response that you can detect visually. You can see, because of course, right, you're going from an aqueous substance, so this is hydrogen peroxide dissolved into water, okay? Um, and just like here, you know, this is hydrogen peroxide, you know, so 3%, just stuff you get at the grocery store, right? Um, and I've had this in my bathroom closet for probably a year now, so, you know, it's been there for a while, so it still works. I checked it the other day. Um, and I cut this potato, well, um, we were making some potato salad with our dill the other day, right? And there were pieces of the potato that didn't get put into the potato salad, so um, I took one of those pieces of potato and um, I decided we are going to do an experiment. So anyways, if you take hydrogen peroxide, uh, get it in the presence of this peroxidase, which is actually what we call a biocatalyst, okay? So, you guys remember bi uh, catalyst? What is a catalyst? It speeds, up the speeds up the reaction by doing what? You guys remember? Lowering the activation energy, right? So. Something to the effect of, right? So if you have something like an ugly curve, but whatever. Um, if this is, was a one-step reaction, which this is not a one-step reaction, but let's just pretend it is, okay? Um, if we had this catalyst, it would be something like that, where the initial activation energy would be that high. So Ea and the cat catalyst activation energy or the catalyzed reaction or Ea cat we say would be low. Okay? So it actually speeds up the reaction because remember the reaction only goes as fast as you're able to push that rock up the hill, remember we were talking about. So if you make the hill shorter, right, it'll be easier to get that reaction going. And in fact, what you'll find is that enzymatic reactions are often one-step, two-step, three-step reactions. So we talked about that. So you can imagine something like that, where this is an intermediate, this intermediate, so on and so forth, okay? And then, of course, this would be what, like delta G or G absolute, sorry. And this would be, um, like, progress of reaction, right? Okay? So this is essentially what uh, a catalyst does, a biocatalyst usually almost, well, they used to think exclusively, but of course not anymore. There's these things called ribozymes and stuff. But um, biocatalysts usually come in the form of these things called enzymes, okay? So an enzyme is a biocatalyst. It's this thing, it's a protein. It's not like a protein in your muscle or something like that, but it's like a protein that's a globular protein, okay? And it has, we can draw a simplified picture of it. You can imagine like kind of a big blob, you know what I'm saying? And I should have brought my, I have, um, that uh, putty, that the stress putty or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, like you could imagine that type of a kind of blob, that might be what an enzyme looks like, okay? So, it's kind of 
got a three-dimensional shape, even though I can't draw it three-dimensionally on the board. That's what I'm really saying. Okay. So you can imagine like my blob, like that, right? But within the blob, there's actually, you know, what we call an active site. Okay. And in that active site, okay, active site is where the reaction happens, that activity occurs. Okay. Uh, some substrate, okay, in this case, hydrogen peroxide, right, is going to go into that active site. The active site is going to make the hydrogen peroxide twist in such a way as to break that bond, okay? In fact, it'll have to do it with two of them because it's got to make one water molecule and one oxygen molecule. So, um, in order to do that, it needs at least two of these. So, Somehow, two of these guys are going to come together into that active site, combine in such a way as to produce oxygen, gas, and water, thereby rendering hydrogen peroxide uh, non-reactive. Okay? Why? Because oxygen, water is, of course, not very reactive, right? And oxygen is going to bubble away. Not, so oxygen is an oxidizer. But hydrogen peroxide is a very, very strong oxidizer, okay? So if you've got this, if you were a potato, right, and you got this inside of you somehow, right, it would destroy pieces of you because it, you know, it's a very strong oxidizer. Just like when you pour it on your hand after you get a cut, you do it because it'll kill all that bacteria, okay? So that same thing is happening in that cut. You can see the bubbling of the hydrogen peroxide, okay? So anyways, so that's what's happening here. And anytime you, anytime you see a word that in biology that has the ending ace, you know that's an enzyme, okay? So it's one of these things. So peroxidase, usually the name of the enzyme kind of describes what it does, you know? So a peroxidase, you know, somehow does something with peroxide, if you want to think about it that way, okay? So, let's go ahead and do this experiment. Um, and I did them, so here's my, one of the pieces of potato, right? It's just a regular old red potato. And if you guys want to look at it. Um, it was a piece that was cut out because, I don't know, it was kind of, there's a little box to it, but whatever. If you want to look at it and see what a potato looks like, there it is. Um, here's hydrogen peroxide, just regular old 3% hydrogen peroxide. I did put it in the refrigerator earlier, and then I opened it up just now, and it went, Psh. you know, so Charles Law does work, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, if you guys remember what Charles Law is. You sure there's not moonshine in there? I'm not, I'm not going to drink it. I mean, you could, if I drink it, it'll be like, you know, like foaming at the mouth, you know what I'm saying? Um, so you can see here, so, yeah, that'd be so awesome. <laughs> you, can, you can see here, nothing's happening, right? It looks just like moonshine, right? Or water or whatever, right? So here, you know, no bubbles, no, right? You don't see anything, right? Okay, I'm not gonna let you do it. Okay. So same bottle, right? Same bottle. And again, you know, nothing's happening, right? So no reactivity of this thing. So hopefully this works after all this buildup, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so let's put the potato in there and see. Check it out. Yeah. Start. So what, <laughs> what's happening is, do you see that? Yeah. What's happening is that you've got that peroxidase enzyme so obviously this reaction here, right, this reaction, hydrogen peroxide, as you can see, is stable at room temperature. In fact, like I said, I've had this bottle in my bathroom for like a year, right? So what happens? It's just chilling, right? But when I put that potato in there, since it's got this enzyme in it, right? So the activation energy for 
hydrogen peroxide to go to water and oxygen is very hot, you know? But if you've got something in there that's an enzyme, right, it'll lower that activation energy and allow the peroxide to be turned to hydrogen gas. And let's see. I might not have enough hydrogen gas in here. Or, uh, sorry, oxygen gas, I mean. <clears throat> and water, that is. So I don't know, it's not as strong as it was on um, Saturday when we actually cut the potato open, you know, but. So let's just do that really quick and see. Yeah, didn't do it. So. Last time I did it, I was able to collect enough, and I honestly don't think I just gave, didn't give it enough time, but give it enough oxygen, it'll go poop, you know, you, so you can actually, another, it's another chemical test to see that oxygen, you know, but unfortunately, you know, we didn't get very much of a reaction party. I know, right? So, I mean, well, what we could do, but I can't record the whole thing, is, like, what we can do is put, like, a beaker over the top of this one and collect all that oxygen gas. We could put a can, we could blow, uh, light a candle, blow it out and put it under there and it'll relight, you know, things like that. Or if we really waited a long time, we could put like a balloon on top of a, the beaker if we found a contraption that could do that and, or invented one, you know, uh, constructed one and the balloon would eventually fill up with oxygen gas if you waited long enough, you know, so. Okay, are there any questions on like catalyst or biocatalyst enzymes, things like that? This is an interesting reaction that you can do at home. You know, like I said, it would have been more dramatic, but it's still going. I know, right? It's still going there. But you can see here, just a comparison, you know? Right? So nothing's happening in the house. So, yeah, so try it at home. Okay, any questions on this stuff? Okay, cool. Yeah, I will, definitely, yeah. <laughs>